Hello. Welcome, welcome, my artist friends. Today is a very special day. We are going to paint two of the characters from the beloved and famous Green Ember book by S.D. Smith. And we're going to paint in the manner of Zach Franzen. He is the illustrator. What I mean about painting in the manner of, it means we're going to try our best to follow what he does. Although no one can paint like another artist, that's a rule. Don't ever worry about that. You can't paint like Zach Franzen and neither can I. So we're going to follow his lead and see if we can bring to life on our paper the characters of Pickett and Heather. So, I hope that you will join me while we get ready to paint. All right. <clears throat> I have plain copy paper, just plain, regular copy paper, and a scratch sheet to help hold it down. Now I'm going to turn this copy paper vertical, long ways, all right, like this. Here are some of the colors that I have chosen for today's painting. And why do we call it a painting? It's because each one of these is really paint in a powder form. So we say we're going to paint so-and-so, we're going to paint this, we're going to paint that, and we call our finished creations a painting. We have pinks, pink and blues and greens, a selection of browns and gray, and white, and a black. Now this black is to actually sketch with. It's not a very big piece of black, but that's okay. If you have a bigger piece, then you go for it. All right, now before we get started, I would like to know who is joining us today. Where are you from? Just let yourself be identified. You're from, you know, India or China or Atlanta, Georgia, wherever you're from. We'd love to know where, where you are going to be joining with us today. All right. Let's get started. This is black pastel. This is what we're going to use to actually sketch with. Now I'm going to go slowly and a couple of things that I have learned from studying Zach Franzen's paintings of Pickett and Heather is that these are not, you know, the bunnies that hop around at Easter time and these are real characters that are brought to life in S.D. Smith's book. Now their heads were difficult for me to draw so I want to show you what I have found out. They're shaped short sort of like a long egg. This is Pickett's head. Here's where his left eye will go and his nose will be around here and we're going to put his ears in here. In fact, let's get those ears in and they're not big floppy ears either. These are, are not comical ears. These are serious, serious ears for a serious defender and a rabbit who carries a sword. Now, I'm going to go ahead, put his left eye in here. And then we are going to 
get his nose. And his nose is right next to the edge. See, it's just like a little V. And it reminds me of a cat nose because it comes down like this. And his other eye is a long, sort of serious eye. Now, Pickett's clothing may take a few minutes. I'm going to start. He has a sort of a muffler or something to keep him warm up around his neck. Scarf. A rabbit scarf. I'm going to go back here and put in his eye color. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's go ahead and get the, his back like this and then his arm. There's his shoulder. Looks like an upside down C. Then we're going to have his arm go this way. And the wrist is bent like this. <clears throat> All right, now this to me is the most difficult part of this. And you probably won't even think, think this is, is difficult at all because you're a good artist and can figure it out on your own. But I had lots of trouble with the sword. Get my hand out of the way. This is the sword hilt. This is his paw. And let's go ahead and See if we can complete his body. There's his, he's wearing a little vest. It must be really cold weather. And he's also has A strap to help hold his his sword on. All right, there's the sword hilt. Here's his hand. So we're going to go ahead and have the sword come out. See if you can sort of eyeball it. You don't want the sword to come out way down on his leg. No, that won't work. Now, he is standing like ready to fight.
let's go like this. There are his pants. Now he is still a rabbit, so he has to stand up on his rabbit feet. which are sort of like little skinny ankles. And I wanted to remind everyone that <coughs> they are welcome. Once this video is finished, you can watch the video again, pause it, rewind it, and just go at your own pace. That's right. And you can watch it and my hand will be out of the way so you can see around it. Okay. Now the cloak he has on is sort of blowing in the wind. Here. There. Now, we have Picket finished, the drawing part. So, let's put our black down and let's go with a lighter green for his vest. Okay, now I'm not turning my, my chalk sideways because I'm trying to get in here and it's kind of tight spaces. If you pick up some black, it's okay. You have the ability to wipe off your fingers on your wet paper towel and smooth it in. See how great that is? And let's go ahead and get his cloak which is a kind of a caramel or a caramel color. We say caramel down here in the South. All right, and then because it's dark up under here where the cloak is, you will want to fill this in in shadow. Now you can paint your rabbit warrior with a color that that you might like. But this is straight off the the uh, the cover of green ember. So, you, you can fill in any of the colors, but I do want you to remember, if you can, to like this video and to share it with your other artists, friends, and family. We would love to see and hear from folks. Okay, now we're going to go back and this is a kind of, oh, what would you call this? This is a bright orange. And I'm going to color his pants. See, I've picked up some black and it's not the end of the world. He's just been fighting and walking and I think it's okay. He does have his scarf up here. Now, we're going to move to give Pickett some color. All right, let's do this. We're going to take this darker sort of color and we're just gonna run it along the side of the ear because the sun is coming this way, so the side of his head 
would be darker. Now see how he just comes to life? Look at this. Then you can take your white and you can give him some rabbit cheeks and how about a little bit of white on the sword which you can pick up some some black and it turns it a gray color all right now we're going to move on to Heather we have him pretty much finished now I know he's hanging out here in the middle of this white paper. Don't worry, we're going to fix him and put him into the scene, okay? Now, the same thing goes with Heather. Now, she's a little bit smaller than he is and standing a little bit far away from him. So, she has, let's see, I'm going to put her down here. She also has like a long face and her ears, I believe, are perked up and she is ready, already listening and making sure things are okay. Now, I do understand that Heather doesn't carry a sword. She is a healer. And there is her head. And while I'm waiting for you to catch up, I want you to please, please remember to take a picture, a photo of your artwork and you can share it with us right here in the comments of this video. We would love to see your artwork because we do happy dances right around this table whenever we get artwork. We just love to, to clap our hands and dance whenever we get, get some photos. All right, I'm going back to Heather, and I'm going to give her an eye like this. And she is her eye. We're going to give her eyelashes right there. And she has the little rabbit nose, which is like a V. And a very serious mouth. Now, Heather also has on a cloak, and it looks like she may have a scarf on, too. I'm just going to just give you some straight lines like that for the scarf. And it sort of reaches out across her shoulder and down the side. Okay. This is her arm. And she has a skinny little rabbit wrist and a paw. And over here, her arm is reaching out because 
she is carrying a staff. I think that's more to help her walk than for protection. And we're going to go ahead, if you have time, and put her hand on now so you can position her stick or her staff, walking stick. All right, let's get it. I'm going to turn my paper just a tiny bit so I can straighten this stick up. She has a cloak that's coming down this way. And an easy skirt that goes way down. And if you like, she does have a little bit of a petticoat or a ruffle and some tiny little rabbit feet. Looks like she's really moving on. She's ready to get on their journey. Okay. What you can do, you can use a, a gray and you can put Heather's cloak and scarf in as gray. Remember where your light comes from. And if they don't have a gray, what could they do? They can take their painter finger and they can just pick up some of the black and smooth it in. Or make it really dark black here to show. This is your painter finger. If you don't have a gray, it's all right. I'm even going to put a little bit of white in there. Now, I think we need to make Heather's staff just brown. And look, see this trick? This is an artist trick. I didn't color it all the way to the edge that the light's coming this way. So the light is shining on the staff. Now, let's go ahead and you can pick out your most favorite blue. I think that this is a lovely heather blue for her dress. And get it a little bit lighter as you get to the edge. A little bit darker over here because this is where she's in the shadows. And she also has on white sleeves, just like Pickett. Now, this is where you may come to a dilemma. Heather is a white rabbit. You can leave her white 
which might be a good idea. Or you can, I'll show you, put some touches of gray in. She's got a little bit of pink on her ear there. And I'm going to color her eyes brown. And she's, it really does look like it's her eyes are black. Now, artist trick. Instead of using gray, take your finger and just sort of give her some shadow away from the sun here. Look at that. There she is. There she is. And you can make the shirt just a little bit dirty if you like because they've been on this journey. I almost forgot to color his strap that holds his his sword there. Now I think these are wonderful characters. But as I said a few minutes ago, they're out here in the middle of this white paper. We can't have that. So here is a dark green. And we're going to put them on a wonderful hill overlooking where they have to go on their journey. You can take your light green and just sort of smooth it in. Look, see how you can take that hard edge right off? Mina, I know the artists are busy painting right now, but where can they share a photo with us? Well, I did mention that a, a minute ago, but let's go ahead and say it again. You can share a photo right here on this video in the comment section. And like I said before, we would love to hear from you. We just can't wait to see your pictures, your artwork. All right, now that's just a little bit of dirt We've got to get some mountains in the background. So let's, you know what? I think I'm gonna switch to purple. This just sounds like it needs a little bump up in color. So right behind Pickett, we're putting a great big mountain, okay? And then over here next to Heather and behind her, there are other mountains. All right. Now you can color this all the way down if you like. In fact, I'm going to color it part of the way down. Try not to get it on Pickett's clothes. We worked too hard for the mountain to get on his clothes. And go ahead, use your painter finger and let's fill in some of this mountain. Look how it just kind of melts away, misty. That's how you can make things mysterious. It just seems like the mountain is there, but it just sort of melts away. You can pick up some of the green. Now, let's give them some clouds, because it's not all sunny traveling by any means. So I'm going to take a darker blue, and I'm going to make some clouds. Look how easy it is. 
Thank you, Dana. You're right. You can't upload photos on the live video, but once this video finishes, please do upload your, your photos right in the comments. Thank you. I've got my chalk on its side and I'm filling it in. Do you think it's going to rain on them? Is it going to storm? Is it going to make the, the journey even more difficult? You just can use your imagination. Go back and check the book. See what happens. All right, there's one great big cloud. Now I'm going to switch to a different blue. And I'm going to make some other clouds all the way down to the mountaintop. Now, I think it's time that you pick your most favorite color your most favorite pastel color and you sign your name because this painting is just about finished. I'm going to pick a pink and I'm going to sign my name here. Like that. And then I want you to take your wonderful painting and Flip it over and call it Green Ember or Pick It in Heather's Journey or just Pick It in Heather. And be sure you put today's date on it so you will know when you did it. And then go and put this in a place of honor because you've worked hard. This has been a long lesson and I know that you've done it beautifully. I can't wait to see your artwork. I really can't wait. Thank you, thank you for joining us today. And always, always remember, you, you are, are an artist. artist. I want to invite you back here each Wednesday at noon for an art lesson Next week, we will be sharing Charlotte's Web, so you can always find the upcoming events right here on the Facebook page, and then you can find past videos in the video section here, and you can enjoy those. We, if you're looking for St. Patrick's Day, we have that from last week, and we have some spring weather, but we thank you again for joining us, and remember, you are an artist.